Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. Have you ever wondered why Netmarble has chosen some of the characters to be native tier 2 while others are just regular tier 1 characters that you can make tier 2? For example, is Proxima really stronger than Hulk in the Marvel Universe? Is Ebony Maw more popular than Thor? Why are some characters native tier 2 and others aren't? If there was a new update to the game that allowed you to advance one of your characters up to native tier 2 power level that wasn't already native tier 2, would you like that? Kind of a build your own epic quest for one of your regular tier 1 base characters like let's say Captain America? Does that suggestion sound like fun to you? Well, if you enjoyed that, you'll enjoy the rest of this video because today I'm presenting some of my best ideas and some of the community's best ideas in a kind of compilation of suggestions and theory craftings for game modes or changes or additions to this game and the characters in it to make it even this that much more enjoyable and fun. So the first one is one of my own, and it's kind of a combination of different things from different games and also from this game. So we already have the idea of advancing a character up to tier 2 once they've achieved their maximum tier 1 rank. You get all their gears up to level 20, you get their uh, character level up to 60, you master their um, leadership, and then you can uh, get on the way to tier 2 kind of ascendancy, and you need to collect their bios, and you need to collect all these other materials but that is as far as it goes you know captain america once he gets to tier 2 is not going to get a huge jump in power level uh beyond that you know you could give him a really nice obelisk a ctp for example but it's never going to be on par with the kind of stats for example i'm talking physical attack physical defense energy defense and hp will never be on the same level as some of the more powerful native tier 2 characters, especially the ones that are the double cost native tier 2s, because we know those are the ones that have the highest base stats and the strongest passive effects. For example, Thanos, he may not be the strongest character in the game in terms of utility, but if you look at his stats, they're insane. And yes, he has a uniform to buff him, but he already has almost 10,000 defense without a uniform, huge HP without even having an HP obelisk, huge physical attack, and then we all know he's got one of the best passives both at tier 2 and at uh, four stars in the game. And there are others that have similarly overpowered kind of broken effects. But now I ask you, what if you could give those kinds of things to one of your native tier one characters? Now, they could be tier two. I, I actually imagine that they would have to be tier two, but then you could theoretically take one character of those characters that you have at tier two, who's not native tier two, and take them on an extra quest. And I would call this kind of an account ascendancy. And it would have some qualifiers. Of course, you'd first need to get the character to tier two. You would need to have them fully equipped with an ISO-8 set, fully maxed out, awakened. You'd have to give them a six star obelisk, max out all their skills to level six, give them maybe let's say five or six star Uru. But then you could continue that quest to make them even more powerful. And you could kind of ascend them to native tier 2 level. That would be pretty easy for Netmarble to put into the game. They would just g basically give your character extra stat buffs. As we know, there's a pretty big sizable stat boost when your character goes to tier 2, and you can see it here at the bottom. Black Panther's physical attack jumps by more than 3,000, and you could have basically the same kind of stat jumps from tier 1 to tier 2 as you do to my new tier 2 to native tier 2 status. In addition, if they wanted to be a little bit better about it, they could include a bump to the basic passive effect of the tier 2 character. So for example, if I wanted to ascend Kraven, uh, his spirit of the hunt, instead of ignoring dodge by 20%, let's say he would ignore it by 50% or 40%. Instead of getting 25% guaranteed crit, he'd get 50% guaranteed crit. And then so on for the skill damage and the bonus damage. That's a very simplistic way of putting it. It doesn't add a new layer to the character it doesn't make them different in any way it doesn't give them a new aspect but it makes them substantially stronger now we obviously couldn't allow this for every single character because that would just imp you know push back the end game far too much and it would seem overwhelming with going on 150 characters but it would be very cool if we had that opportunity to do it for one character only yes choose on your account only one character to ascend to native tier 2 and that's it uh, maybe perhaps once a month Netmarble could give us for free or sell us for a small crystal fee the opportunity to 
reset our ascendancy token or our ascendancy on our account and then try to ascend another character so you would get maybe a partial or no refund on the materials that you used to ascend that character but you would unlock the ability again to ascend a character by losing your originally ascended character so it would allow high level and whale players and veterans to uh, experiment by ascending different characters to native tier 2 and seeing how much better they are. You know, how much better would Venom or Anti-Venom be if he had been a native tier 2 character? Would he have been as strong as Thanos? Would he have been as good as Wolverine? Maybe, and maybe we can find out with this kind of ascendancy uh, theory that I have or idea that I have. Let me know what you think of that one. The second one I want to introduce to you guys is one from someone called Death's Funeral. There are frequent Twitch uh, watcher viewer and his idea is similar to mine it's quite cool though it would be kind of an infinity stone upgrade system and this would essentially replace any kind of tier 3 or 7th star that some people talk about that's coming next for the game once you know basically everyone has every character at tier 2 and what this would essentially do I didn't flush out the idea too much with Death's Funeral, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you have the Infinity Gems, there are six of them, and your character would go on some kind of quest, or you would complete some you know, list of tasks, or you would accumulate these resources, and then you would be able to get one of the Infinity Stones, and each Infinity Stone would be preset with certain stat bonuses to your character. So you know, if you collected the Power Gem, or the Power Infinity Stone, the red one, your character would get a boost to their damage stats, so maybe Maybe Blade's physical attack would jump by 5,000, and he would get an additional, you know, uh, increased skill damage and bonus damage. It would be doubled, so it would go up to 80% and 50% or something like that. If he got the Time Stone or the, the, the Time Gem, there would be a different effect, or the Reality Gem or, you know, the Soul Gem or something like that. And each one could be preset with certain stats, you know, healing, uh crowd control like a stun or freeze time or something like that and then you could basically pick and choose one of each of the gems for all of your characters to give them an extra added layer of depth and complication as far as PvP and uh, different game modes are concerned. I really like this type of quest. It fits in very well thematically with the upcoming Infinity War movie that we know we're going to get some content pushes for because Marvel wants to uh, advertise their movies and we have most of the Infinity War cast unlike any other Marvel game. We have the Black Order, we have Thanos, and then we have most of the cast of fighters uh, that are going to be competing or banding together to fend off uh, the Mad Titan. So I really like this idea by Death's Funeral. Let him know in the comments and let me know in the comments if you dig it as well. The last idea I have is one that was submitted to me by a very special friend, again, another Twitch uh, viewer, but this one is a bit more dear and near to my heart. And it's Ultron Rules, that's his name, Ultron Rules. And I'm gonna go over to Ultron's character uh, page now because I'm a corny dude. Uh, but his idea is quite a bit more complicated and a bit longer, so I wanted to get in depth uh, with it and leave it for the end so that you guys can focus who are still left. Um, and essentially what he wanted to do was introduce a new game mode. So this is not having to do with characters specifically, not having to do with uh, upgrades, but this would be in a, a new game mode or would replace an existing game mode and it would basically be like a weekly quest. Now I know a lot of people don't like all of the daily grind in this game and how it feels as though it's a full-time game but this one is very cool because not only does it reward you for playing every day but it also allows you to experience it even if you don't play every day you just won't get as many um, rewards and you can basically imagine this as like the daily login for the month except it's a weekly login and you just have to do a little bit of stuff to get through it and essentially what it entails is that it would be a six-day quest that culminates in a seventh day boss fight so you're building up up to this epic boss fight uh, and there would be a theme to each week so for example the example that Ultron rules gives would be the spider-man kind of weekly quest where you fight different villains you know we have Sandman lizard green goblin and it builds up and on the seventh day you'd be fighting kind of a world boss ultimate version of dr. octopus and I think this is a really cool idea we've always wanted to see new versions of world bosses I would love new versions of world boss ultimate because it gets really boring to fight the Black Order every single day and I really love the thematic nature of this and it takes advantage of 
how many different characters we have and how we have a, such a huge expansive roster and I've always been preaching this since day one this game needs game modes that encourages use of a larger cast of characters you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe built up these different characters in order to put them all together this game built up all these characters but it just doesn't know how to put them all together. It keeps forcing us to just use the meta characters over and over and over. So essentially how the reward system works for Ultron Rules' idea is that each day of the quest that you complete, so defeating Sandman on day one, defeating Rhino on day two, would give you some kind of item, whether it's a piece of a map, a key, an amulet, a, you know, a shard of a device, Think of it as a puzzle piece. And those six days are six different puzzle pieces. When you put those pieces of the puzzle together, it will unlock this seventh day epic boss fight quest. And of course, the further you get in that quest, whether it's defeating all seven bosses or only one, the better your rewards would be. It wouldn't be a clear ticket available, so it would be encouraged. It'd be encouraging manual play and not auto play. Um, and you know, you could make up the different days that you missed by paying crystals or paying gold, so that you could still compete in it in the last day's fight if you wanted to, even if you had missed some along the way. So there's always a chance for inclusion. There's a chance for Netmarble to make some money on the side with some crystal purchases, because you know they love that. And it just feels like such a fresh and amazing idea. Um, in addition, he suggested some things about how you could have it geared uh, by the characters or the player's character so if you had only a five star spider-man you could play you know the first five levels using that spider-man you couldn't do the sixth and the seventh so the levels would get progressively more difficult um, I like that idea I would like to kind of work on it or kind of modify it a little bit because it may become predictable if the first week or the first couple days of the week are always extremely easy because it's expecting you know one to three star characters but I like the fact that he's trying and he's making an effort to include everyone in this game mode not just veterans not just high level players uh, very very cool in addition he talks about uh, some rewards about gold and multiplied by the heroes level so it rewards veterans because if you have a tier two character you get better rewards kind of the way that the cinematic battle Battle works you can go in with a one star Thor but you get a really lame box you go in with a tier 2 mythic uniform Thor you get an unusual mythic chest that could have half a million gold in it so I like that idea Netmarble already seems to be on that trail so it wouldn't be much of a leap of logic for them very very nice some other sample theme fights that I really really like we talked about the spider-man dr. octopus fight you could have daredevil fighting his way up to kingpin so we again we already have so many good daredevil villains you know we have bullseye electra and he could fight his way through he could even have kind of a reunion fight with punisher on the rooftop chain him up I mean, there's just so many amazing possibilities you could fight two versions of kingpin because we have his robot uniform you could have thor fighting his way up to hella you know we have malekith we have loki we have you know he could fight some kind of mind controlled angela it's just wonderful there's so much possibility here captain america fighting up to red skull it's really great. I really, really like this idea, um, and I really would like to see it in some form, or at least get some sort of acknowledgement uh, of this idea from Netmarble. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Share this video online. Let's get Netmarble's uh, attention. Let's hopefully they'll see it, get their eyes on this. Subscribe if you're having a good time, and of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.